One area that tends to give students trouble, particularly in Lab 5, is the concept of period folding, specifically when we graph our results for the variable stars that we're using in Lab 5. Um, so I'm going to try and give you in this video a brief overview of what period folding is and why it's useful to us. So in an ideal world, if we had a variable star that was a perfect sine curve and we could observe it all the time, very rapidly, with very accurate photometry, we might get something that looks just like this. So we have something that just varies over time, just like a perfect sine curve over and over and over again. It's perfect forever. Uh, unfortunately, we don't live in an ideal world. Even if it were uh, a perfect sine curve, we would never be able to measure it nearly that well. So there's going to be some noise in the data. So we still have a sine curve, but it's a little bit noisy. And unfortunately, we can only observe at night. So when the sun's up at our site, we can't observe the star. So we wouldn't have a perfect curve. We might end up with something like this. And chances are we can't observe it quite that rapidly. There are other observations going on. So we're going to have some sparsely sampled data set. So we went from this perfect sine curve, where it's really easy to figure out the period, so the amount of time between one peak and another peak, and the amplitude, so the distance from the top to the bottom of a peak. You can figure it out very easily just by looking at this plot. Unfortunately, we end up with something that looks like this. And if we didn't know that this was a sine curve that it was varying with, it might be hard to pick that out by eye. So we can use a technique called period folding to try and fill in all of these gaps. So let's uh, just try something very simple with the data. So here's, here's our original, now sparsely sampled data set. And you can see that we have five different nights that we've observed this object here. Well, what happens if at the beginning of every night we started our plot over? So instead of our x-axis continually increasing as we go to the right, we would instead restart the plot every night and just overplot night two on top of night one and then night three on top of both of those and just see what that looks like. So we'll end up with a plot that looks kind of like this. So you can see we now have each of the nights in individual colors, and you can make out all the different data points that are in there. So you can see now where we did have a sparsely sampled data set, you can see we actually cover the entire curve. We've got some points that are up near the maximum. We've got some points that are down near the minimum. And we have points that fill in both the rising and the falling part of the plot. So now we can use period folding to replot those on top of each other. Instead of starting over every night at zero, we can start at the beginning of one cycle and just replot over and over again on top of it if we know what that period is. So if you make some guesses as to what the period might be, you'll find that as you get closer and closer to the answer, your plot will start to look better and better. So we're first going to start with a guess of one day. Uh, which is essentially what we've plotted here. And you'll find that if we didn't have those lines in there so that we could differentiate between every individual night, you would get something that looks like this. And you can see it doesn't really quite make a sine curve, so it's not quite as useful as we had hoped. So let's instead make another guess. Let's pretend that it's about half a day, uh, and you'll get something that looks a little bit more like a sine curve. You can see there's a big empty area in the lower right-hand part, and it kind of looks like an arch. But Half a day isn't quite right, so let's make another guess of about 0.51 days. And you can see now we're starting to get something that looks a lot more like that nice sine curve that we were trying to get. So let's make a couple more guesses. We'll try 0.52 days, and now it's starting to look very much like a sine curve. It's starting to tighten up there. It looks pretty good. Uh, if we go to 0.53 days, still looks pretty good. Uh, so let's just keep going. 0.54 days, it's starting to fall apart again. So we know that it's down in there in the 0 0.52, 0 0.53 range there somewhere. So if we fiddle around with the numbers and we play with it long enough, we can find out that the exact correct answer for this particular object is 0 0.526 days. And you can see when I put that in and I've done the period folding, you can see it makes a really nice uh, a tight curve here with very little spread in the points. and It looks like a very nice sine curve. Now, just for illustration purposes, with that 0.526 days, there's that night one data, here's the night two data, and then three, four, and five. And if I color code them and put them all on top of each other again, you can see that different parts of the curve are filled in from different nights. But because we've been able to guess what the period is, we can very accurately get uh, the, the period and the amplitude, and it makes a really nice sine curve, so it's very easy to figure out what we need to know uh, from this. So that's what period folding is all about.